So we're going to go through some models that I use, which usually takes about two to three hours per model with working with projects to come up with the right message, the right narrative. So today, with a very compact time, we're just going to go through the model, kind of want to open your mind on how you can story tell and how, what kind of angles that you should look at to help you to tell your story that is more compelling. So why do fundraising case for support? So case for support is another way that we say about fundraising narratives, like a narratives for your project, you know, so that people can support you. So this is really about, it's not about what you like, you know, your mission, your vision is really about something that you create to get supporters. And fundraising is about storytelling. We want to tell a lot of stories. And I know some of you, especially those of you from Africa, you're really good at this. You know, your culture is, is built upon storytelling. So let's use that strength. And also, we need to understand that organizations have different stories to tell. And donors also have different motivations. So we need to understand both of them. We need to understand your organization's strength, one. But also, we need to understand donors' motivation. Um, and we need to empathize with donor to tell a compelling story. So another uh, mistake I often see is that organizations always say, oh, we're the best, you know, like give to us. Why, why aren't donors giving to us? The, the problem is not you. The problem is that donors have different motivations to give and they, uh, they align their values with different uh, organizations. Maybe they're into climate, maybe they're into education. So it's, it's more about how you tell, how you understand the donors and how you tell the story to help them understand and align their value with yours. Um, so empathize. Empathy is the mindset of the whole exercise here. Um, and again, when I also mentioned before that a lot of the mistakes is that when we write our project description, we say a lot about what we do and focus really on the activities and the what. But really, the fundraising case support should focus on the why and not the how and not the what. Uh, so that's just a little bit um, about why we do this. And what these models that we're using is kind of based on the design thinking mindset. So we want to understand uh, the organization, one, we want to understand the organization. What is unique about your organization first? And we also want to understand the donor. So there are models that we can use to do that. And then after understanding, we create. You know, we create something like a, a value proposition. And then we deliver through storytelling. And there are several elements of storytelling that we're going to cover. Uh, how we deliver the story with what kind of mediums. I'm going to provide you with some tools and models that you can use yourself uh, after the session to help you to kind of create a blueprint on that delivery. So, so these are the three steps we're going to go through. Um, so first of all, we want to understand your organization. So these are four areas that we want to brainstorm about your organization so that you can actually come up with in the end, what is unique about your solution? Uh, so first area is what problem do you, your organization or the project solve? Uh, so usually this will be done in a workshop where we'll all go through like a Miro board or uh, like, like a whiteboard uh, with sticky notes or with something that we can all brainstorm about. You know, this is the problem we're solving. You know, we need to focus on that. What is your solution? You know, what is the solution that you're going to provide for this problem when you're solving the problem? And also, it's important to know what are the organizations that have similar causes. Um, you know, like you can, if you're a climate-focused uh, organization, you might want to think about other, like Friday for Futures, for example, is also climate-focused on advocacy. Is that similar? Because it, with those similar organizations, you can learn from them. You can also um, get a, a notice of what, who are their supporters as well. Uh, and then the 
The third area is what are the organizations? Yeah, the, that's the third area. And the fourth area is what are the activities? So you want to kind of list the activities that you do to help you understand in the end what's unique about your solution. So I want to give you an example. Um, we, we sometimes also use like um, a really deep dive on the how, like on the why. Why do you do this? Uh, because it's not, sometimes it's not very simple. Uh, you could say something like, oh, we educate children. Um, but there's more to that, you know, like, um, so I, I think with an example, I can explain this a little bit better. The project that I was working with is the Wachau Community Hippo Sanctuary. And it's in Ghana, in the, uh, like, it's a community by the Volta River on the on the border with uh, Burkina Faso, and the problem is what what is the problem that they're solving? So, the organization I work with, which is the Calgary Zoo, we send a biology biologist to the Wachau community uh, community Wachau community fifteen years ago because they have a problem with the hippos. The hippo. The original problem is that the hippos is being get being killed by people. Uh, there are lots of poaching. There are lots of you know lots of wildlife and people conflicts. So we send a biologist thinking you know this is the problem we're solving, right? Like we're trying to protect the hippos. But when we get there, when we're trying to understand the community a little bit more, it turns out that there's a reason why there's a conflict between people and hippo because. The water, the river, is a um, the only water so- source for the Wachau community. So all the villagers, they get water from the river. But the hippos are obviously using the water as well. And there are lots of incidents um, where people run into hippos and they get, you know, um, there's conflicts. So in the end, uh, what we're, uh, not, we're solving is not really something that a conservationist or biologist can solve. It's a problem with the local setup. And in the end, what we did is that we created the solution is really about moving the village away from the river and helping them to, to dig wells uh, to get like freshwater resources away from the water and then create like protecting the river and creating the Wachau community hippo sanctuary as an eco uh, tourism uh, tourism business for the villagers, so that they can actually uh, have an economic solution for their village. Um, so, in the end, this is the problem and the solutions that we're creating an eco uh, tourism business. And um, what are similar um, organizations uh, that? is doing the same thing. So it's, it's more like conservation, community-based conservation projects. And also what's unique about your solution, like our solution is really, a, you know, like combining biology and combining biology with economics, you know, like kind of connecting the social side of things with the conservation side of things and creating that unique solution for the community and base in the community um, to protect a species in the end. So this actually, this initiative has won the Equator uh, Prize uh, with the UNDP and the United Nations Equator Prize a few years ago. And what we learned is that, um, you know, community projects are really like have have lots of, it's not very surf, like on the surface, it's more, you need to really understand the community to come up with uh, a good solution. So this is the example of understanding your um, your organization and going through those exercises will help you to come up with uh, why your solution is unique. Uh, another organization I, I work with uh, as well is um, a refugee women's organization in Berlin. I like to tell their story because at first they always say, Oh, we're providing yoga classes to refugee women. That's what they say about their project. You know, like we're Hilda's house and we provide refugee women with yoga classes so that they have mental well-being and wellness. 
But once we go through the exercise, really understand their organization and also looking at similar organizations who are doing the same thing. So what are the organizations that are similar causes that are doing the same thing? We find that really interesting, um, interesting thing about uh, refugee education in Berlin, because when we look at other organizations who are doing helping refugees, we look at the pictures, they're all men. Men are the dominant uh, user of these refugee services because when women come to Berlin from a conflict area, they are often tasked with taking care of children and they have no uh, time for themselves to either learn a language or go to use the refugee services to learn a skill. So when we look at that and comparing to the solutions that they're providing, the narrative of the organization really changed into we are the only refugee organization that serves women. We're, we're the only one that serves women who actually fall through the cracks of the, uh, the, the, the system that we're using right now. So after understanding your organization and looking at the similar solutions around you, you could kind of think, think about, uh, you know, how is your solution unique? What is that unique point about your solution? Um, and sometimes you just, you know, oh, it's just kind of a light bulb that goes off in your head. So this is a model that you can use to help you to reach that point. And we obviously don't have time to do that today with everyone. Um, but I'll provide this slide deck. You can use it as a playbook and do it in your own organization with a brainstorming activity. And the next step is really about donor empathy and value alignment. So after we uh, understand the organization, we want to understand the donor. So with donors, it's really about, um, you know, what is the demographic of your donor and the aspiration of your donor? Uh, what is the behavior or influences? So this is what we're talking about. What do people do? What do donors do? And what are they being influenced? So with crypto donors, for example, let's just use them as example. So with crypto donors, I say demographics for crypto donor is on the younger side. Okay, so like traditionally donors all around the globe are possibly on the older side because they accumulate wealth during their youth, and then they, when they get older, over fifty, um, they start to dispense the wealth. Um, but crypto donors are younger, eighteen to forty, uh, I think. And they aspire to different things than the traditional donors. They aspire to a, a lot of the givest donors. They aspire to helping community uh, who from the root. And they aspire to more of an anarchist approach where they don't believe that the government and uh, institutions are doing it right. And, the, you know, let's create a new way of doing things. Um, the behaviors and influences, obviously, is how would they behave? You know, like what kind of media are they going to be on? So with a crypto donor in this part, you know, like we, it's, it's not a big mystery. Like everyone use Twitter. So it's very, into, it's very imperative that you also use Twitter to communicate your project so that you can get to uh, more crypto donors and also find out what their influencers are. Um, maybe they're influenced by particular projects um, like Gitcoin, for example. Some some of the DAOs that are bigger influencers in this area. Um, we can you can also think about how to get into those communities and get your projects words out there. Um, and important thing is that what do donor wants to achieve? Understanding that you know, like with your project as well. Right, like what does donor, um, what is pro the donor achieving through your project, and what is the barrier that they're uh, experiencing to achieve that? So, for example, if the donor is aspired to uh, helping with climate change, and the impact they want to achieve, obviously, is to how can I like reduce the uh, you know the CO the CO two emission? How can I get more trees planted? How can I get, you know, like conservation, uh, support conservation in the world? 
And the barriers are many times like perhaps um, government bureaucracies, um, things that you know people have promised to do and they didn't do it. How do I get um, most effectively getting this? You know, like these barriers. So think about those and uh, comparing with your unique solution. This is what we want to find is in the middle. So when the donor wants to achieve an impact, uh, we want to think about what impact have we achieved? What is unique about our organization, our project? What are the benefits to the donors? Right? What are the motivators you can offer? And how do you measure impact? So these are really important questions to ask. To to answer before you start telling your story. And the other side, the barrier reliever, is how do you make it easy for donors to donate? And how do you alleviate risk? What are the risks, really? Like, if you are not achieving your goals, what is going to happen? What is the biggest risk is, that's going to happen? Um, how do you relieve frustrations from the donors? So these are also things that you want to tell donors in your narrative so that they would be like, oh, yeah, I can uh, you know, achieve my impact and I can also uh, avoid some of the barriers. Um, so this is um, this kind of a value proposition graphic is what we want to uh, use um, to help you find that gift zone, what we call the gift zone. So when donor's value align with yours, then they will want to give to you and support you. So answering those questions are very important. So far, any questions? Any questions from you guys? No? Then we're going to just like do a very quick exercise. So this value proposition uh, format um, is something that we use a lot. Uh, to create that narrative, to help you create a narrative, right? So the format is, I have two versions here, just want to show you that it, it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be one version. You know, what we're doing is just continue to prototype your narrative so that it can be better and also prototyping your narrative to a specific donor. Um, so version one, version two is the same. I'm, I'm just putting it there just to tell you that there's no one single answer, right answer. Um, so answer this question for your project. If I am the ideal donor persona, so the donor persona is the one that we were just going through, like for example, a crypto donor, right? If I am a crypto donor, I donate to you rather than any yeah. other organization or at all because here you put down a sentence of how you're addressing the problem differently than others so that I can, and then here you put down donor aspiration goals. So I can, you know, what, what can I achieve? What, what is this donor going to achieve? Um, so maybe we take five minutes and if you can want to participate in this exercise with your project, um, can you just grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down the sentence? If I am the donor you want to reach, like let's just say crypto donor, or if I am a philanthropist, if I am a donor, I donate to you rather than other organizations or at all because how are you addressing the problem differently so that I can achieve, the donor can achieve uh, something? What is that thing? that they want to achieve. Um, so yeah, let's just grab a pen and paper and use five minutes to come up with a sentence. And then we share a little bit and we move on to delivering the story. Um, this could be a little bit difficult because usually we go through workshops, hours of workshops before we reach this point. But I think it's interesting for you just to come up with some something right now. Okay, everybody understand what we're doing? Yeah, we're going to yeah. fill up blanks for the for this for this format. Right. So time is up. I'm going to read out the example that I presented to you, the Watch Out Community Hippo Sanctuary, the value proposition that I created. If I am donor, 
I donate to Watch Out Hippo Sanctuary because it is a unique, sustainable solution combining science and economy to help both animals and men. So I can help creating opportunities for communities in need. Um, that's version one. Uh, I have another version. If I am a donor, I donate to Watch Out Hippo Sanctuary because it is a community-based solution that truly takes into consideration of the needs from both community and wildlife so that I can help solutions that is truly sustainable. Um, yes, anybody else want to share what you have worked on? Due to, you have written something. Great. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. I wrote, um, I'm a crypto donor, and I donate to your organization because you make it easy to donate crypto, and I can help refugees arriving in my local community to settle in their new homes. Perfect. Yeah, so that's that's great. So you, the donor really wants to achieve, they want to help refugees. And why they want to use you is because they have a, a affinity with crypto and you as a refugee organization is unique that making that crypto donation easier for them. So that's that's perfect. Thank you, Claire. And um, anybody else who have written something? Yes, I, I share one in uh, the chat. I can read it. Oh, great. Yeah. So if I am an old retired woman, mm -hmm. I donate to you rather than other organization because I know where my money goes so that I can have more impact on a person's life and watch the results. Great. Yeah, I love that how you have defined your donor which is an old retired woman. So this is something we really want to do, how Project Do is, is also, instead of being a little bit more general, to define who are you targeting at. And because of that, different people, the old retired woman would have different motivation and aspiration. So it, here is great because you want to impact, the old retired woman want to have an impact on a person's life and watch the result. And also you emphasize with them on um, their need to kind of track the money, right? Track where the money goes. I think the only thing that I would work on a little bit more is that how is your solution unique? Um, like how, like how come, like what is you are achieving that other organizations are not? Uh, is it only about the money tracking? Uh, then emphasize that. I, I think this is probably it. Um, but um, a little bit more on the uniqueness uh, is what I would work on. Great. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Okay. We'll just go on to delivery. So we have done a little bit of a creation, right? Like we understand and then we create. And here is the delivery, which is we want to deliver the story. So the first element is that in this story that we're telling, who's the hero? The hero is always the donor. Okay, like make, he, make the donor your hero, not the organization. And avoid using we. And like when we do fundraising in all our communications, we always use you, uh, especially when we're thanking donor and when we, even when we're, like writing a case for support, this is what you can do and really connect them with the cause and not, not really about, hey, here's what we as an organization can do. So the hero is the donor. And the second thing is that we need to include in our story, what do they want to achieve? Like the old retired woman, they want to help someone. They want to help people to change their lives. So we should, we should include that information in our description or in our story. How can you help them achieve the goals? Is your value proposition just created? So Popline just created that value proposition saying, we want to help you to achieve this goal by, you know, help you to track your money so that you have the comfort that the money is being used in the right way. Um, what would happen if hero fails? Um, so sometimes we use more of a risk tone to help people. Um, so if, if, you know, if, if you fail, then the world will be not changed or like the climate will continue to decrease. Um, so that's a risk factor. 
that you want to include in your story? How can you show success? We also want to see, like, we talk about impact measurement or what kind of impact that we're, oh, we're going to help 100 um, children from this community, something like that. Um, <coughs> what emotion and tone we want to evoke. We want to, I, I, in the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about emotions. And then don't forget to include a call to action. What can the hero do to help? So in the end of your description, or any description, there needs to be a call to action. Donate here to do this, or go to our website, or do, you know, uh, support us, read more, something that they can do. Uh, what visuals we're going to have to support the story? You know, think about the picture um, to go with your story. So always choose carefully what you, the pictures that you use, and anecdotes and reflections. So if you have small stories of success you want to share this is the place you can also share and use anecdotes uh, so that they can understand the process they can understand your activities better so these are the elements that you can use in your description and um, the next step is the tones um, so the tone of your description right some People want to really emphasize the now, um, and some people really want to emphasize the future. So it's your choice to use these different tones, and they will give people a different idea about your, uh, about your project. So if we do now, is there a positive or negative? Right? Like if the now is positive, then it's an opportunity, and if the now is negative, then you're presenting a crisis. So with climate change, for example, uh, actually climate change is probably more of the future. Well, it's already happening. So it is, it is now. It is a crisis that we're in. And with future, again, think about positive or negative tone. You know, positive will be more you're presenting a vision and negative you're presenting a risk. And interestingly, we have done studies on which tone are more effective when it comes to fundraising case for support. And interestingly, crisis and risks are actually more effective than opportunity and vision. So emphasizing on the negative sometimes is actually more effective in this kind of activity, which is fundraising. Um, but it's really up to you to choose them. And the next part is the medium that we need to consider. And this is really just a list of what you can consider as the medium to deliver your story. You can do a slide presentation, you can do a video, you know, like there's, you know, emotion, but it's costly. Slide presentation is portable and it's static. I think Ruminator, you've got a really nice uh, slide deck for your case with support and, and I'm a big fan for that. And experiences uh, are, you can create an experience for the donors, right? You could help them, take them into your community. You could create physical spaces. You could create digital interactive stories. So it's all up to you. And um, you want to sometimes customize your proposals for bigger donors, corporate. Um, but sometimes social media campaign works better uh, with especially crypto donors. And yeah, so uh, these are the mediums that you can think of. Um, so, so those are the elements. Um, in the very compact uh, half an hour to go through when you're trying to tell the story. Um, so if, is there any uh, questions so far? And we're closing to the hour. And any questions and thoughts? Is this useful for you guys? Or um, do you have any thoughts on, on the presentation so far Claire really helpful for me I think um, the biggest takeaway is that um, organizations and I think probably our organization is guilty of this sometimes is mm -hmm. in our messaging focusing on we or what yeah. the organization is doing without um, putting it in the eyes and the, the, the thoughts of the donor. 
Yeah, so that to me great. has been really helpful. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, so the empathy uh, side of things is very, very important. Um, yeah, so lastly, I just want to uh, show you that we have done a checklist. Uh, once we have this case for support, once we have our narrative down, what do we want to do, right? Like, what do we want to start doing with them? Uh, this is just a list you can actually go through. You can talk to friends, existing supporters first. And then you can create a Twitter account because with Giveth, really crypto donors is all about Twitter. You tweet about your Giveth profile. You post on social media accounts. You email your existing supporters. You create messaging regarding accepting crypto. You know, kind of messaging to your supporter and board on why are we now we're accepting crypto and why we do that sometimes. Creating a thank you message for donors um, to who, like, you know, who you can reach once they donate and also have a timeline on project milestones when you can report and celebrate your project or fundraising success. So we have actually this checklist uh, in on this link. So this is a link to a fundraising guide that we have created uh, that sits on the Give Us doc. So if you want to look into more details on what you can do with these messaging, you can click on the link and go there. I will share this link in the chat as well. So um, this is how it looks like. I'm going to share it now as well in the chat. Great. So um, yeah, so this is it. We have uh, used up all our time and I hope this is useful to you. And again, these workshops are really usually uh, two to three hours workshop per each model. I'm just going through it really, really fast. And for you, uh, we're going to provide this as a playbook for you so that you can perhaps take away to your organization and start thinking about how to create that message, thinking about all these elements, and then go through the checklist, go through our fundraising guide, and go from there. Um, yeah, any other questions and comments? Hi, not a question so much, just a comment um, mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody in the workshop now has access to the maker section in the Giveth server. Have they all assigned themselves the maker role? Because we quite often share tips and information in that section. That's a great point. Can you explain a little bit more to everyone how to assign that? So if you go up to the top of the menu on the left-hand side of the server, you will see a section under Welcome that says Assign Roles. If you go in there, you can assign yourself the maker role. There should be instructions in there. I'm just going in to have a look. Perfect. Uh, Ashley has posted something on the uh, chat as well to help you. Yeah, there's a link in the chat here. You can just click right there and just go in. In order to assign the role, just click the corresponding emoji, um, and then you can mm -hmm. assign or remove whichever roles you'd like. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, everyone, uh, thank you for coming, and uh, we hope to bring you more of this kind of chat. And today is just the first one, um, so it's a little bit kind of an overview of everything. Um, but check out our resources and also come back to the community in May on Wednesdays. Okay, great. Thank you.